bleeding purple and gold from the heart of Los Angeles. This is the LakersNation.com podcast with your host, Trevor Lane. Welcome to today's show. As always, we are powered by CLNS Media and LakersNation.com, your one-stop shop for all things Lakers. The Los Angeles Lakers season is over and the NBA playoffs are in full swing, but that doesn't mean that what's happening around the league isn't going to make an impact on your Los Angeles Lakers. So I've brought in Corey Hansford of LakersNation.com to help break down everything going on, particularly with this one guy named Paul George. Corey, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Glad to be back on. And glad that we're, uh, we're actually getting this done and having all of our equipment work this time, right? Yeah, this has been like uh, like a six month process to finally figure out the right time and then get everything together. <laughs> and, I mean, See, you all power at your house. That's how much the basketball gods are trying to keep us apart. It's been it has been crazy. It's been one thing after another, and yeah, literally, the guys listening, we tried to record this last night, and the power went out. It was out of my house for two hours, and uh, and we didn't get to record. So fingers crossed that we're able to get through this whole thing. Uh, Corey, let's start off. The Oklahoma City Thunder were just eliminated, and so they're they're out of the NBA playoffs. The Utah Jazz knocked them out. Russell Westbrook just fired away, took a ton of shots in Game Seven, and the Utah Jazz pulled away to get the get the victory. What does that mean for the Lakers? I mean, we know that Paul George is going to be either one A or one B on their target list this summer. Um, I would I would have to think it means. A lot for the Lakers as far as Paul George has always said that his number one thing is winning. He wants to win a championship and he wants to go to the place where he feels he has the best chance to win a championship. So if the Thunder go into, you know, the second round and they upset Houston and they played Houston and and Golden State very well this whole year, they get a run and say they upset Houston or they take Houston to seven games and, you know, lose a close series or, you know, they get to the conference finals and, you know, give Golden State a six, seven game tough series. And they feel like they're only a step or two away from the title. It's going to be hard for Paul George to say, let me leave this team that's really close with a superstar player and Russell Westbrook to go take my chance with this young team that may or may not pan out. But the fact that the Thunder struggled all year, they never quite jailed the way people thought they would. I think they only won two more games this year than they did a season ago. Um, and then you get put out by a young Utah team that, I mean, in all honesty, the the two best players on the court should have been Russell Westbrook and Paul George. Mm-hmm. Um, and they could not put this team away and got lucky to even make it to six games. Probably should have lost in five. So you would think that in, in his mind, you would have to think after going through a year of this, all of this and just – not really getting that success and getting that the the, uh, the excuse me the chemistry that uh, they were hoping for that he would have to seriously think about his other options because it simply just didn't work and it was clear to anyone who was watching him this year. Yeah, and in that that final game had to leave a bad taste in Paul George's mouth. I mean, he was two for sixteen shooting, so a rough shooting night for him. No threes. He had six turnovers, and then. Russell Westbrook outshot him, almost tripled his shot total. George shot 16 times. Westbrook shot 43 times. And then after the game, people were asking Carmelo Anthony, you know, hey, uh, or during his exit interview, they were saying, hey, do you, would you consider a role off the bench? And he said, absolutely not. He, he did not have a very positive reaction to that. So, I mean, is this even a situation that Paul George is going to want to stick in regardless of whether he's going to go to the Lakers or the Sixers or, or whoever? I wouldn't think so. I, I think it's a. I, I just don't think it's a good situation. I don't think Carmelo Anthony, uh, Carmelo Anthony, is anywhere near the player he used to be. Russell Westbrook is an outstanding, talented player, but he needs the ball in his hands all the time to be at his best. At least that's what we've seen so far, especially over these last couple of years. And that doesn't, you know, aid itself well for other stars to be as good as they can be. We've seen it through the years with role players and stars alike. You look at what Victor Oladipo did a year ago as compared to this season, mm-hmm. you know, and I don't think anyone would put Oladipo as like a top 20, you know, a super mega star. He's someone that most would say he should be a second option or maybe a third option. Guys like that should get better when you play with superstars like Russell Westbrook. And we've seen with Oladipo, with Paul George this season, who numbers were down some, not a lot, but they were definitely down some this season. 
Kevin Durant's become a much more efficient player when he left. We've seen it a lot of times. Even guys like Deion Waiters and uh, Sabonis, who was also in the Paul George trade, guys leave Westbrook and start playing better. And I'm not saying that's all on Westbrook. I think that's on the Oklahoma City coaching staff, which through two coaches has never figured out a way to run an actual offense other than one of you get the ball and make a play. Uh, it's 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 every, all of that and to me you add all of that up I don't think it's a situation if I were Paul George personally and it's being completely as as objective as possible I don't think I'd want to be in a situation where I'm gonna be marginalized like that and not to mention being in a small market with an average and best coaching staff I just don't think that's a way to win if that's winning is his number one priority as he says it is yeah agreed and you know if if he does decide that he's gonna he's gonna stay in OKC, he's gotta like this team that they've got put together right now because the Thunder are pretty much locked in. I mean, Carmelo Anthony has a twenty eight million dollar early termination option for next season. I can't see him turning down twenty eight million dollars. Nobody's giving him anything like close to that next year, even if he isn't all that happy in OKC. Would you agree that that he is gonna pick that up? Carmelo couldn't get twenty eight million on a three year contract at this point. No. I got a, <laughs> there's no way he's passing up that kind of money. They might try to buy him out, but there's no way he's just giving up twenty eight mil. Not right. a chance. So that means that if you are if you're the Thunder and you've got Carmelo Anthony at twenty eight million, you've got Russell Westbrook at thirty five, and then Paul George, he has a player option for next season to pay him twenty million, almost twenty one, he's gonna decline that and he's gonna try to re up for a max deal so then he would go up to to about 30 million a little bit more their total payroll is creeping close to 150 million they are, they're gonna have zero flexibility to do anything else so if you're paul george you have to absolutely love the team that's on the floor and the team that they've got on the floor just got bounced in the first round by the utah jazz so i think all things have got to be be looking up for the lakers or any other team that is hoping to land paul george right now it, it has to be. It absolutely has to be. And I think everyone has their fingers crossed. And I'm sure there are going to be the second that free agency opens. And I'm sure even a little bit before for some of those, you know, not so, you know, some of those nefarious owners and GMs who, you know, not the Lakers because we don't know. Do no, Lakers, so, Lakers never tamper. Magic Johnson doesn't wink at anybody on live TV. Nothing happens. Absolutely no such thing. <laughs> But I am sure everyone will be lining up to get a player of the caliber of Paul George, those who have the money, because there aren't a lot of teams that will have the salary cap space uh, necessary to sign someone like like Paul George. Now, the uh, the Lakers are, are hoping to land up to two superstars this summer. I mean, we heard LeBron James, we've heard Paul George, but I'm noticing something interesting going on on Twitter. Where, where the, I guess there's always something interesting going on on Twitter. But whenever Paul George's name comes up, with respect to the Lakers – I'm seeing more and more fans say he's not worth the max deal or they don't want to give him a max deal because he's more of a tier two superstar. Or he's, he's that, that, uh, that second star guy. He's not the, the dominant player that you need to really lead your team. What's your take on that? Is Paul George the guy the Lakers should be throwing a max deal at? Did you watch KCP this year? I mean, I, I mean, KCP was nice. Uh, not like act like he was just terrible, but let's just be honest here. Paul George, he's a tier two superstar. Do we have a tier four superstar on this team right now? You have a tier five superstar on this team right now. <laughs> Paul George would be easily the best player on this team. Period, and it's not just offensively; it's defensively, and it fits with what you want i mean it's it's a we're not saying this is the last move that you make and the lakers are going to go to championship contender but you're telling me that i mean if they brought back the team from last year the lakers i think would be and were able to stay healthy the lakers could fight for a playoff spot and you had paul george in 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 kcp spot Let's uh, come on. Uh, I will give Paul George whatever he wants to come here, and I guarantee you that the Lakers will win at least between forty-five and fifty games next year, uh, assuming good health. Because it's not just about Paul George; you have to also factor in everything else. People look at I don't I don't trust anyone's numbers anymore. Who when they play next to Westbrook, man shot forty-three times in the playoff game. I'm supposed to expect guys to be able to get in a rhythm. And and be able to do normal things when they're playing with with a superstar like that. It's it's gonna be tough, but that's still Paul George. I watched Paul George what three years ago, two three years ago, go 
basically head up with LeBron James in a playoff series and and take, you know, and, and give Cleveland all they could handle. And they could not stop him to save their lives. I'm not saying Paul George is definitely going to be that player, but let's not act like he's just some barely borderline all-star player who who's, you know, not at that level. Paul George is a star in this league, and you add him to the Lakers core, you're going to be back on the map immediately. Absolutely agree. Yeah, I mean, if you are the Lakers, you give Paul George the max, the max in a heartbeat because there are five, 10, 15 other teams right behind you that, that would give it to him. In fact, if, I mean, if every team in the league had cap space, they would all throw a max offer at, at Paul George and be and happily do it because he is a, a phenomenal player. No, he's not LeBron James. He's not Kevin Durant. He's not the guy that you can just give him the ball and he's going to take over the whole game and all you, all you really need around him is just role players. That's not him. But I love the fit. Man, I mean, I'm thinking about the Lakers in a, in a death lineup scenario down the stretch. If they hang on to Julius Randle, and you can put a lineup out there of Lonzo Ball, Paul George, Brandon Ingram, and then throw in Kyle Kuzma and Julius Randle. That's a lineup that not only has a lot of offensive versatility, you have five guys who can create – you also, on the defensive end, have five guys who can switch everything. They can all switch onto point guards. They can switch onto bigs down low. You can do just about anything there. And all five of them can grab a defensive rebound and push the ball in transition. And that's going to be some beautiful basketball if they can bring in Paul George. So I think that's a, a wonderful fit in addition to him being a good player. Absolutely. A perfect fit. And then you throw in someone, excuse me, so you throw in someone like a Josh Hart who could also be slid into any of those roles. And let's say, you know, Lonzo's having an off day, and you just slide Josh Hart in there. We already know Ingram can play some point guard. Paul George can handle the ball, too. And you imagine, like, now you can really switch one through five. Because, you know, Josh Hart can stonewall a a raging bull in the post, apparently. He's, you know, he's not unmovable. So, I mean, the fit and everything makes perfect sense. It's a hometown thing. I would be over the moon not to mention let's remember that the lakers haven't really had the best of luck in free agency so let's not get picky all of a sudden and uh we only want these ones and then we don't want lebron because we all hate lebron and uh, i'm not sure paul george is a real superstar look we couldn't get greg monroe to come to the lakers right. a year or two ago now we want to be picky with which superstars we want to bring in Like, let's if we can get a superstar in this building, you get him in this building and you figure out the rest later. Yeah, you have to. I mean, they they haven't had the best luck recently in in free agency. And we've seen that we've suffered through that for years. But it's not like it's LeBron James and everybody else is dang and Mozgov. That's not the way this works. If you get Paul George on a good deal, you do that every day of the week. I mean, this is a this is a no brainer move. And if you can get him, the chances go up that you're going to be able to bring somebody else in. Because if you go to LeBron, you go to to say you wait till 2019, you go to Klay Thompson, you go to Kawhi Leonard, you say, look, come play with Paul George, come play with Lonzo Ball and Brandon Ingram, these guys that are a year better. So this would be a nice step in the Lakers' rebuild to now have someone legit to build around and that can draw in other stars. I think this would be be a great move. Now, Corey, before we, we get out of here, let's talk real quick about the playoffs. I mean, there are eight teams left right now. There's a lot of different outcomes that could happen here. I mean, of course, Golden State is still the favorites. But from a Lakers' perspective, Is there a particular outcome that would be good for the team or maybe an outcome that would be bad for them? I mean, some of these teams, the Lakers are going to be competing against for free agents in in July. Um, Well, first and foremost, the Celtics losing is always best for the Lakers. Yes. Um, That's a great, that's a great way to kick things off. That is a given. Um, Personally, I feel like I worry if teams almost want Golden State to dominate again. Because I feel like if teams feel like there's there's a they're they're coming down, they're not quite as good, they're starting to crumble a little bit, that'll get teams to really start thinking, this is our time, we gotta make this run now. We have to add, you know, we have to, you know, team we have to we have a chance to get the star, we can get him, we can or, or or a team, you know, the Spurs losing was good for the Lakers as well, especially if all this Kawhi nonsense is is real and, you know, that, that might have to get moved on. I feel like the majority of the things that the Lakers would want have happened outside of the Cavs losing in the first round and the fact that it, you know, it took them seven tough games to get through Indiana in itself is still a help. 
So to me, um, Cleveland losing, if the Lakers really want LeBron and he kind of looks at the situation around him, which he's done twice in the past, and he's looked around and said, this isn't the situation that's best for me. I'm out. Um, if you know the Lakers really want LeBron, to me, that would be the best thing. That was beautiful. <laughs> that would be the best thing uh, if if LeBron is to look around in that situation and go, I, I can't win here. But I see what they're building over in L.A. And like you said, if Paul George goes there, oh, now we've got something we can really build. To me, that would be the best thing for the Lakers. Also, selfishly, just based on the games that they had this year, I want the Sixers to keep doing well because I like the little budding rivalry that started this year between the Lakers and the Sixers. And I want that intensity to keep growing and that animosity. And those games, those both of those games were like playoff games this year. So I'd like Philly to, you know, you know, still be successful so that, you know, if the Lakers can make a couple moves when they face off next year, those are going to be some really, really serious, intense games. That's just a personal, you know, selfishness of me. Okay, so I'm I'm with you on the Cavs. We want to see the Cavs uh, not do well. I was kind of hoping they would get bounced out. It almost looked like it was going to happen, and then they they pulled off the win over Indiana. But the Sixers thing, I'm going to disagree on. I not about the rivalry. I think those games are great. They're a lot of fun. But I'm going to share a little fear here, Corey. I'm I'm a bit worried that this Sixers team is doing too well. And that if they make it to, say, the Eastern Conference Finals or if they somehow make it into the, the NBA Finals, this is a team that's going to have room for a, max, for a max contract. And they'd also be a nice fit for a guy like Paul George. They could even slide in LeBron James. They're going to be going up against the Lakers bidding for some of these free agents. And so I'd, I personally would rather see the Sixers bow out and hopefully look like they're just not quite ready, not ready for prime time, than see them really succeed here in the playoffs just because I think that they're going to be one of the big opponents for the Lakers come July. I do think that they I, – I agree with that. I do think they are you know, one of the few teams that have the, the young players and the cap space that the Lakers also have. Um, I think the message has already been sent. I think the fact that they just ran through Miami like they were nothing – already kind of sent that message to the league. I, I think, obviously, you know, the further you get, it's still, um, you know, I guess it, it helps in some, but I don't feel like it's some major difference. Oh, they make it to the Eastern Conference Finals now that they're, I, I feel like that message has already been sent, that the Sixers are here, they're not afraid of this stage, and, you know, they're going to be around for a while. Personally, I don't think they're a good fit for LeBron. I think LeBron and Ben Simmons on the same team just doesn't make sense to me um i think they're too similar they both need the ball in their hands you can't really play them off the ball they're basically the exact same position um i don't think that would work um pg i guess a little bit but even that uh you know they got covington there. i mean covington's no paul george but um you know they kind of got guys around that i think are, are very similar to those to those same players um but I do completely uh, understand the point of, yes, they are going to be one of the Lakers' main main um, competitors this summer for some of these big names. Yeah, that's the, that's the big concern for me is that, is that this, this is a team that can say, look, we've got two guys that are clearly superstars. I don't think the Lakers have anybody they can point to yet that is in that stratosphere. You've got, you've got Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid that they can build around, and then you can make that, that sales pitch to, to LeBron. I agree with you on the LeBron thing and the fit in Philly. I don't really like it, but I think there is that agency connection because he does share an agent with, um, with Ben Simmons. So maybe there's something going on there. But then, of course, he also shares an agent with – one KCP, who the Lakers, so the Lakers have had an opportunity to talk to Rich Paul all season because they gave seventeen million dollars and David Nwaba in order to get um, in order to get KCP. So definitely a factor there. Um, who are you hoping wins it all? You, are you going with Golden State as the the team that you're hoping wins the whole thing, or you know, if you had your pick, who gets it? Yeah, I like Golden State. I've always been a I've been a, a fan of Golden State since. When they first started building up uh, a few years back when Mark Jackson was still there. And I just didn't – and it kind of strengthened a little bit when they won their first one and people started making up excuses. All oh, these guys got hurt and this stuff happened and they aren't really the champs. And I, I, it kind of pulled me. I, I'm a fan of Steph. I love Clay. Um, Draymond's crazy but a good, fun crazy that the playoffs need. And, you know, and I like Steve Kerr. Uh, Steve Kerr. 
you know, Kerm Popovich. That's my presidential ballot for 2020. So <laughs> Kerr Popovich 2020. <laughs> it's on there. So, you know, as a just as a basketball fan, I like Golden State. And I'd like to see another dynasty. Like, we really haven't had a true, a true, true dynasty since the early 2000s Lakers. Um, so to me, them winning three out of four and that fourth year setting the record for most wins in a regular season. That's a real dynasty, and I'd like to see you know have a have another dynasty for once before they start building down. Once the Lakers you know get the stuff together, and take I think them out. the 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 dynasty for this era has been LeBron. Right, I mean, whatever team he's on in the East has made his way to the the Eastern Conference Finals and well, the NBA Finals really season after season. What is it? I think he's at eight in a row now. Seven straight. Seven straight. This would be eight. Eight if he made it. Eight if he made it this year, but. I, in a way, yes, but it's it's not enough winning. Like it's to make the finals seven straight years is an absolutely ridiculous accomplishment. I'll never, you can never ever take that away. I don't care what all the Eastern Conferences week and these ten. I, I don't care about any of that. You make the finals seven years in a row. That's an accomplishment in and of, in and of itself. But you know, you got to win more for me. I need. You know, he had the back-to-back in Miami, but those sounds between two bad, really bad finals losses. And then he has another, you know, another bad one. And then another, like, it's it's too many, it's too many losses for me to consider him a dynasty. Personally, in, in my opinion, I can't call that. But the accomplishment is still unbelievable. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, there he hasn't won, well, I mean, he's won a number of, of championships, but but maybe he didn't win enough when he got there. But you know what? I mean, he's been just rampaging through the Eastern Conference year after year after year. Be interesting to see if maybe he finally comes out west and has to deal with you know the Golden States and the Houston's and all that. By the way, I really hope we end up with a Golden State versus Houston Western Conference Finals. I, I wish there was a way that could be the NBA Finals. I think that would be such a fun series. That's gonna be that's gonna be awesome. I could actually see Houston taking it. I could see them them walking away with the NBA championship this year. And you know, heading into the season, everybody said it's Golden State all over again, and they're gonna just roll through everything. So, kind of nice to have a little bit of competition, right? Definitely nice to have some competition. I do still lean Golden State if uh, if Golden State is healthy and Steph. I know Steph is uh, supposed to return, but um, mm-hmm. you know, assuming health, I still lean Golden State. I just. Personally, I think they have a little more room for error than than Houston does. If if Harden doesn't play great, I have a you know Houston's going to struggle to me. But if you know KD has a bad game or Steph has a bad game, they've got other guys to pick up the slack. I think that makes a big difference, um, and I still think they defend a little bit better. But it is good that there's some there's question marks surrounding it. It's always fun that you know everything just doesn't seem to be set and locked in stone. So um, I don't see any way that those two won't meet in the Western Conference Finals. Um, and, yeah, that, that's going to be – it should be a really good series. Definitely. Definitely. That's going to be a great series. I'm super excited for it. Hopefully hopefully everybody gets there healthy and we get the the series that, that really the, the fans deserve after this. This is, it feels like it's been building all season for this Houston-Golden State showdown. And hopefully next season the Lakers can find themselves in the mix. Well, Corey, thanks so much for coming on here. Glad we got through the show with, with just about without any errors. My dogs freaked out and barked a little bit ago, but but other than that, I think we got through without any technical difficulties or anything. So um, so I think we'd better better call it quits while we're ahead here, right? Definitely call it quits while we're done and pray, you know, uh, an hour from now, I don't get a text saying like some, somehow this didn't record or <laughs> – you know, it wasn't skipped or anything like that. I think we'll be all right. Yeah, bolt of lightning blew up my laptop or, or something like that. We're going to hope that that doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, guys. So that was that's uh, Corey Hansford from LakersNation.com. Always great to have him come on. Um, awesome stuff on Paul George and Lakers and, of course, the NBA playoffs. You can follow him on Twitter at the Corey H. It's at T-H-E-E-C-O-R-E-Y-H. Definitely a good follow on there. He loves smacking down people with uh, some – ill-formed opinions on there again my name is trevor lane and this is the lakers nation podcast you can catch our next show coming out on monday until then head over to lakersnation.com for all the latest breaking lakers news see ya